Hello! Welcome back to my Mario Sunshine hacking tutorial series. So without further ado, let's go. Um, first things first, um, go to the Microsoft Store and there's Python. Get the latest version of Python. As of this video, that is 3.11, but just get the install button. It might be over at the side if you have it full screen. It's just get Python. You need Python. Uh, once you have Python installed, I want you to go to the first link in the video's description, Pi ISO Tools, um, and just go down and hit Stability Releases, and that will bring you to the latest version that is pre-compiled. So we're going to hit Windows, because we have a Windows computer, and we're going to download that. Okay. When you download Pi ISO tools, it should be this file right here, Windows 64. And what you want to do is you want to right click and open it with your 7-zip opening program of choice. I just use 7-zip. I'm just going to hit open archive. And then this application will pop up or whatever you use. And we just want to take this exe and we'll just put it on our desktop because we want to use it. All right. And that is the Pi ISO tools installation process. Pretty darn simple. Now that we have Pi ISO tools installed, um, let me explain exactly what Pi ISO tools does. Um, Pi ISO tools will take our existing copy of Mario Sunshine and then b let us break it down into each of its individual components. So it'll break our game down into its levels, its code, its music, and its animations, and then we can swap out the files that the game has with files we want to put in. So we can put in our own stages, we can put in our own code, we can put in our own music. Um, so Pi ISO Tools just lets us take the singular video game file and break it down into the files that the game is constructed from. Um, so what we're going to do is first we're going to hit file, open ISO, and then we're going to navigate to where we have our ISO of Sunshine saved. All right. So now this is our uh, copy of Sunshine, but we want to have this be our game. We want our game to be cool. All right. So what you can do is we can uh, edit everything here. So let's say I want to take name my game Super Mario um goes to burger king all right there we go super mario goes to burger king and this thing right here that's the name um this thing right here though um this is the game code um i do not recommend you change the game code as changing the game code um will mess with things in Dolphin Emulator. Um, if you don't know, Dolphin Emulator um, knows what settings to apply to a game automatically based on these letters right here. Um, so if you change these letters, Dolphin will use um, settings presets for different games. So I recommend leaving this alone. Um, the maker code is sort of the revision. So this copy of Sunshine I have is the first revision um, of the game. So I'll just change this to, let's make that revision seven, just for fun. All right, um, the banner, you can both export and import PNGs to use as the banner. I'll just take something I have on my desktop somewhere. Uh, what up? All right, so as you can see, um, you can put PNGs as your new banner, um, so you can distinguish what your game is from regular Sunshine. Just You can have a cool, fancy graphic. It's really nice. Now there's short name. Uh, short name is Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, short maker Nintendo. You can just change all of this. You can change the description. Amazing. Cool. Bunch of funky stuff. So now that we've made all the changes we want to make our thing the way we want it to be. We're going to hit File, Extract, and we're going to take what we have going here, 
and we're going to extract it into a folder. So we'll just make a new folder on our desktop. So I'm just going to go new folder. And I'm going to name this Burger King. There we go. So now I'm going to navigate to my Burger King folder. Now I'm going to hit select folder. And as you'll see, this progress bar will go and it will say job complete. All right. Now that it's done, we can close out of this ISO. So I'm going to go file close. And as you can see, it exited the ISO. Um, so you know how I was saying that it broke the game down its, into its individual parts. So it's organized in a, a structure. So here's the game's root. Here is the system files, which are what you're going to use to like run the game. Um, here's the files. Uh, audio resources, here's the data of the game, here's the opening banner. Uh, let's just go in data. Oh, here's a couple cutscenes. I'll just double click this one, you can see what it is. Wow, that's a cutscene. So as you can see, you can interact with the individual parts of the game in their most natural form uh, through extracting the ISO. Um, also inside of the scene folder here is the levels. Uh, this is where the levels exist. A neat feature about Pi ISO tools is that not only does it break the game down into a billion pieces, but it also puts the game back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit file, and then we're going to hit open root this time. Not open ISO like we did the first time, but open root. And so then we're going to navigate to that folder that was titled root and it'll generate that when you have extracted your ISO so we're going to navigate to here, click this root folder, have it active and then we're going to hit select folder and as you can see um, here's our game, it has all the changes and it's sitting here in this folder ready for us to play it and stuff um, so yeah that's that's how the Pi ISO tools works. So let's say you want your game, my cool Pientissimo Burger King Mario, I want that to be just a single file again. So what do I do? I go file and then I hit build. And then we can name it whatever we want. And I'll just name it Burger. All right. There we go, burger on my desktop. As you can see, there it is over there. It says it's done, you can hit OK, and we can close out of this. And we have successfully made burger the game. Our next link, and that is Better Sunshine Engine. Um, this is not mandatory, but there's literally no reason not to do this unless you're modding a version of the game that's not the United States version. If you're modding the United States version, there is no reason not to do this. But if you're modding other regions, I don't think it's even compatible. Um, so just keep that in mind. But we're going to go to the latest release, and we're going to hit the RAR one, and we're going to download that. And again, just use your application of choice, choice that opens RAR files. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, and in here you'll see a bunch of stuff. What we want to do is we want to go to our game, right? This is our game, our Burger King folder with our Burger King game. And here's the root folder. So from the root folder, we want to go click inside the root. And then we want to go inside of the system folder right here. SYS for system. All right. What we want to do is we want to replace this game's already existing boot and main.doll. So I'm just going to click these two and I'm going to replace the ones that exist in here going out of the system folder back to the root folder and we're gonna go inside files and here where audio resources and data are we're going to put our uh, Karibo folder in so we're gonna drag and drop wow there's the Karibo folder and there's this thing called mods this is where your code-based mods are stored in the game. Um, there are many mods which you can install to your game. For example, um, I have this module called Better Sunshine Moveset, uh, and that gives you like custom moves like the long jump and backflip and all that fun stuff. 
Um, and I have a mirror mode one and one made just for the sunburn. Uh, but anyways, there's some modules you can download and they will make um, the game more customized to your liking. Um, but the only one that's strictly mandatory is the Better Sunshine Engine. Um, as Better Sunshine Engine implies, it makes sunshine better. Um, inside this system folder, um, just double click this main.doll. So what is a .doll file? So you know how applications in Windows, Windows applications are .exe? Well, applications for the GameCube are .dol. So just think of it as an exe, but for your GameCube. Um, yeah. Oh, also, I should mention, um, for this tutorial, you will need to have um, Dolphin emulator already installed. Um, I just kind of assume you all have this already, because if you're trying to hack a GameCube game, there's no way you don't already have this installed on your computer. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, one thing I should note about um, Dolphin, though, that I failed to mention, and this might be a hiccup for some people. Um, let's just go Dolphin. Um, you'll see that if I go to download Dolphin, it'll give me a bunch of different versions. So there's the beta versions, the development versions, and the stable versions. Now, you might be thinking, oh, stable? Stable? That means it's not going to crash as much. It's better. It's good. That's a lie. This thing is from six years ago. Okay? This thing is ancient. So it's actually really bad. Don't download any of the stable versions. They're all really old. What I want you to do is open up main.doll. And you can just double click that. And if you don't already have Dolphin set up at your main application for .doll files, do so. Um, but you can just double click it and uh, set Dolphin as your default app to open this sort of stuff. Super Mario Sunshine. You might be thinking, wow, this is pretty normal. Uh, what exactly did Better SMS do? It seems like it kind of just did nothing. Well, that's where you're wrong. Notice that this game is a 4x3 game and I have it stretched to widescreen, but it's kind of ugly looking. Alright, I'll be real, it's kind of ugly being all stretched to widescreen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to options and whoa, there's a whole new options menu. Um, yeah, that's how better SMS works. And you can see here's the game's default settings like controller rumble, uh, stereo, movie subtitles. But if we hit R, whoa, better sunshine engine? I'm gonna change that aspect ratio to 16 by nine. I'm gonna change that frame rate to 60. I'm gonna change it back to 30 because my computer's kinda sucks. Um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, here's just some simple settings that um, Better Sunshine Engine starts off with. This is Better at Sunshine Engine. Um, it's very helpful. Um, yeah, but there's one last thing I'm going to show you people about Better Sunshine Engine. So when the game loads in, you'll get the Nintendo logo, right? And then you'll get the Dolby logo. And then the Dolby logo fades out. Once it is faded out, then it's a lost cause. That's when the trigger ends. You have to do this thing before it fades out. As long as you do this thing I'm gonna tell you before it fades out, you'll be fine. What you wanna do is you want to input the Konami code in between the Nintendo logo and the Dolby logo. If you input the Konami code in between that amount of time, it'll bring you into debug mode. There we go. As you can see, um, Better Sunshine Engine is now in debug mode. Um, let me explain what you're seeing right here. This right here is the level select menu. Um, this lets you teleport to any level in the game. Um, also, you will have noticed that the um, coin sound effect would play, but pitch shift if I have my audio still on. Um, that's how you know that you got it to activate because it plays a pitch shifted version of the coin sound effect. There's three bars here. I believe the red bar is some memory heap or something, or is it the blue bar? I don't really know. The red and blue bars are kind of for coding guys. I don't actually know what they mean. But the green bar is the game's memory, the amount of memory the console has. Right now, all it's loading is some text on a screen, 
So it has plenty of memory. Um, also, you can see the um, the FPS of the game. A nice way of once you're in debug mode, let's say you're in debug mode and you want to get back to the save select screen, the little the title screen. What you can do is you can go over to show movie and that will bring up all the cutscenes. Um, oh yeah, uh, that's another thing that Better Sunshine Engine does. Let me just load a cutscene real quick. Um, as you noticed, there was a blue box with some text that came on the screen. Um, that is because we unlocked bugs and exploit fixes. Um, a neat feature of Better Sunshine Engine is that it can lock certain settings behind like requirements. Um, also, the debug info can be toggled. Um, that You can be toggle it on and off by hitting D-pad up and Z at the same time. Um, however, um, I'm on the, the current build of, that's publicly available, um, which is an old build. On the old build, it is just Z uh, that toggles it all. Um, but on the updated builds that Josh will make public eventually, um, you have to hit D-pad up and Z at the same time to toggle. Um, and then you hit Z regularly to toggle between the infos. Um, the reason we made it so it toggles between the infos on Z on the newer builds of Better Sunshine Engine um, is because the text on the screen actually takes up a lot of the game's like processing power and it just became annoying. So rendering the text caused a lag, so it became annoying, and we made it a bit better. If you reset the console, um, reset the console, you can map it to a button. I have mine mapped to R on my keyboard, R for reset, and I just have it mapped there, and it's what I like. So I'm just going to hit uh, R for reset. If you are in debug mode and reset, then it'll bring you back to the level selection menu. Um, so I can literally go to whatever level I want. Yeah, so there's player stats that shows, um, position, rotation, movement, speed, status, state, flags, blah, blah, blah. Collision stats are going to be very helpful for us as level builders. As level builders, collision stats are vital. This stuff is your bread and butter. You will love this debug screen if you are making levels. Um... Yeah, um, and world states, um, area IDs, and episode IDs. So we are on the first episode of Bianco Hills, so our ID is zero, because things in this game start at zero, not at one. Um, but the area ID is two, because this is the second area in the game. Um, it is the second area in the game. The zeroth area was airstrip, the first area is the plaza, and then the second area is Bianco Hills. Um, but yeah. Also, if you want to um, find the warp ID of a individual mission, then you can take this hex value and convert that to decimal, um, and that will give you the warp ID of this specific episode in this world. Um, yeah. The perform objects just lets you know how many entities are in the stage. Um, I forget if killing one of these makes it lower, I don't think it does, because they're still loaded into memory and stuff, but yeah, that's just kind of how many things are in this stage. I'll also leave a link to this mariaus.map file in the description. Um, this file, when placed in this folder right here, next to opening BNR, Karibo, and all that, when it's placed in there, um, it will make it so that when the game crashes, It'll print out a, te a screen of letters and numbers that will tell us why the game crashed. Um, this is just so that when you come asking for help, we can better diagnose it, um, and that you can help better diagnose your, your own issues by having the uh, panic handler show up on screen and tell us what's going wrong. Burger.